Hello boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we're going to learn how to divide numbers using the long division strategy. Uh, as you can see, I have a worksheet that I have created for my students with long division problems uh, with a framework for the algorithm. But before we get into the steps of long division, let's just talk about division as a concept, shall we? I've created a little visual to help uh, with my explanation. Now this might be review for many of you, but for some of you this might help you uh, solidify your understanding. As you can see, I have eight X's arranged in an array. I have two rows with four X's in each row. So if I wanted to divide uh, this amount into, say, two groups, I might create a, a, a division number sentence that looks like this. Eight divided into two groups would give me four in each group. And as you can see, I can just create two groups by circling the two rows, okay, eight X's divided into two groups would give me four in each group, okay? Now sometimes you're going to see this number sentence represented in a different way. You're going to see the dividend, the number that you're going to divide, placed in this funny looking bracket thing. Technically it's called a vinculum, but uh, you don't really need to worry about that name. I just sometimes call it the house. I'm going to put my dividend in the house, and uh, I write my divisor, the number I'm dividing it with, on the outside. The divisor comes knocking at the door of the house. Okay, so this uh, setup is the same as this number sentence uh, in terms of uh, mathematics. So I have my dividend, 8. I want to divide it into two groups. How many groups of two can I get out of eight? Well, I can get four groups. Now, the terminology I just used there sounds a little different because I can phrase it differently. So if I divide eight into two groups, I can have four in each group, right? Eight divided by two is four. Or I can think of it this way. If I want to divide eight into groups of two, I would have four groups, like so. Two groups of four, four groups of two. As you can see, these numbers are interrelated. And if you recall, uh, eight divided by two equals four is part of a fact family that connects to two multiplication problems, too. If I have a factor of two and a factor of four, and a product of 8, that means I have four possible problems that I can generate with this fact family. And that, of course, is 2 times 4 equals 8. 4 times 2 equals 8. 8 divided into 2 groups gives me 4 in each group. Or 8 divided into 4 groups is going to give me 2 in each group. As you can see, these three numbers are uh, interchanged uh, depending on whether or not it's a multiplication or a division problem. Hopefully at this point in your fourth grade career, this is review. However, it gets a little trickier when we get into larger numbers. Now, as, as you can see, this array down here is a monster. And uh, just by looking at it, it's hard to tell how many X's are in each row. I can tell there's two rows, but how many? Okay, so this is where uh, physical modeling or concrete models start to get cumbersome when the numbers get big. So that's why we learn a strategy uh, to do the symbolic work that just uses numbers. Okay, and as you can see, I have the strategy broken down into six steps. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, check, and then either repeat the process or find a remainder. Okay, so this is my first problem. It's 46 divided into two groups. And uh, as you can see, my uh, really lengthy array uh, has two rows in it, um, and that is a total of 46 X's. You'll just have to take my word for it unless you want to st uh, stare at this screen and count all the X's. But rather than counting X's, let's actually use a formula. Okay, so the first question I have to ask myself is 
how many groups of 2 can I get out of 4? I want to divide 4 into 2 groups. Well, I know that I can get at least 2 groups out of 4 because 2 times 2 is 4. And then I'm going to multiply and put that number down there. So what I did just now is I divided 4 into 2 groups because 2 times 2 is 4. Now I have to subtract the difference uh, from my multiplication fact from my uh, first digit uh, place value, the tens of my dividend. So 4 minus 4, that's going to give me a difference of 0. So I've now subtracted. Now if this was a single digit number I was dividing, I'd be done. However, this is a two digit number. 46. So I need to divide the next part. So I have to bring down my 1's place value, which is 6, and I have to then check to see if my 1's uh, place value number is bigger or smaller than my divisor, the number I'm dividing uh, into groups. And 6 is bigger than 2, so I have to repeat this process. Okay, so now I go back to the 6 and I have to divide that again. Can I divide 6 into two groups? Well, the answer is yes, because 3 times 2 is 6. I'm going to subtract the difference. 6 minus 6 gives me 0. There's nothing else I need to bring down because there was only two uh, place value columns. I check to see if I have a number that is larger than my divisor. It is not, and because uh, my difference, 6 minus 6, gives me 0, there is no remainder, and I don't have to repeat the process, so I am done. So what did I find? So 46 divided into two groups would give me 23 in each group. Now let's take a look at that array for just a moment, okay? So... If each of these rows has 23, what did I just do with that formula? Well, I first asked myself, how many groups of 10 can I put in each group? Well, I realized that uh, 46 is made up of four tens, and if I split them into two groups, I can put two groups of 10 in each group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... There's a group of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's another group of 10. Already you can kind of see how this is very unwieldy uh, to do this uh, pictorially. Okay? So I was able to get two groups of 10 into each group. Okay? Now I have six left over. And then I had to ask myself, how do I divide 6 between two groups? Well, as you can see, I can make two groups of 3 because 2 times 3 is 6. So here's my two tens right here, 20. And then I have my three ones, which is over here. That gives me my 23 in each group. Okay? Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, check, and repeat, or find the remainder. Okay. Now there's a mnemonic device that I use to teach my students this process. A mnemonic device is just a clever way of remembering complicated information. And the mnemonic device is dad, mom, sister, brother, cousin, rover. Rover being an old-timey name for dogs. Okay. So if you're thinking of a fact family uh, I have a, a physical family represented here with dad, mom, sister, brother, your cousin, and then Rover. Each word is, begins with the same letter as our steps. Okay? Let's try another problem, shall we? So let me go ahead and erase my check marks so I can keep track again of what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to divide 54 into two groups. So the first thing I have to ask myself is, can I divide the 5 and 54 by 2? Or can I divide 5 into two groups? Well, the answer is yes, because 2 times 2 is 4. So again, I'm going to use division to help me 
find how many groups I can pull out of this. 2 times 2 is 4. So now I have divided, I've multiplied, now I need to subtract 5 minus 4. Of course, 5 minus 4 leaves me a difference of 1, and then I'm going to bring down my 4, like so. Okay. Now that I've brought down my 4, I have to check, is my leftover number, 14, bigger than my divisor? Well, yes, because it's only 2. So that means I have to repeat this process. Okay, that's what the R means, means repeat. Okay, so now I have to ask myself, how many groups of 2 can I get out of 14? Well, I know that 2 times 7 gives me 14. So if I subtract 14 minus 14, I get a difference of 0. So I divided, I multiplied, I subtracted 14 minus 14. There's nothing else for me to bring down. And I check my number, my difference, to see if it's bigger than my divisor. It's not, and there's nothing left over, so I'm done. So my answer of 54 divided into two groups would give me 27 in each group. Now, like we just talked about, division problems belong in a fact family that also involve multiplication problems. So, if I'm not sure if my answer, 54 divided by 2 is 27, I can check by using multiplication. So uh, let's just use a little uh, partial products multiplication, shall we? 27 times 2 is 20 times 2, and 7 times 2. Well, 20 times 2 is 40. 7 times 2 is 14, and if I add them together, oh, you already probably see it coming together, I get 54. So it works. This matches this. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, check, and repeat. This is the formula that can help you divide any number under the sun, okay? Uh, the larger the number, the more place values your number has, the more times you have to repeat the process. But this formula can work to divide any number with any divisor. Okay? So you're going to need to practice this formula. It's going to take some time before you get the hang of it, as with any new skill that you're learning. Okay? So don't be afraid to ask for help if you're not getting it right away. Hey, that's why I always recommend at the end of my videos that you talk to your math teacher. Especially when something is new and a concept is tough and maybe has a lot of steps, you might have questions. So please ask your math teacher those questions. Well, I hope this video was informative. Maybe this got you on the uh, path to learn how to use the long division strategy. Uh, good luck with this, and uh, we'll talk again soon, friends. Thank you.